What's up, y'all, and welcome into the Jack Vita Show. I'm your host, Jack Vita, and we have a very special guest, as many of you can see here on the video feed. Uh, before I welcome him in, I just want to say thank you all for checking out the Jack Vita Show. If you like what you hear today, please subscribe wherever podcasts are found, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Log on to my website, jackvita.com. We just had a great conversation with Arrestus Destrade, formerly of baseball Tonight, he's now the Rays broadcaster. Had a fun conversation with him. Next week, I will be talking with Garrett Powell from The Bachelorette. We'll be recapping the U.S. Open. And today, we are welcoming in Dario Medrano. I said that right. Medrano, yeah. You're there good. we go. Yeah, uh, formerly of MTV's Are You the One and The Challenge, four seasons on The Challenge. Dario, how's life been? Life's good, man. Life's good. Just uh, just working and, uh, as I say, minding my business. Not too much going on. I'm actually trying to get a softball team together, which is not easy for, you know, uh, guys start doing their own things and kids and marriage and all sorts of stuff. It's hard to, to gather up a bunch of people. But if I could get back on the diamond, that would be uh, that'd be dope. Yeah, it's really hard because softball, you need nine or ten guys Whereas, like, I'm playing more tennis these days because you only need to get, like, one or two other guys to play tennis. Yeah, what, what's the uh, – it's not tennis, but it's played on a smaller tennis court, not badminton. It, it's like uh, – it's like paddle ball, is it? I yeah. Don't know what it is. You can get, like, the, 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 the ball and the equipment on Amazon, but I see a bunch of people playing it. And, um, yeah, I'm looking for new stuff to get into. So. <laughs> Softball is just – a step towards baseball so why not but yeah it's hard to get get all the guys together good stuff so dario before you were tearing it up on the challenge you were tearing it up on the baseball time and i gotta know where did you play your college ball and what position sure yeah i was a center fielder uh i played i went to a, a community college uh, i went juco so out of high school i went to a division three school was unhappy knew i could do more knew i wanted more and like a lot of college baseball players who don't end up where they want to go, junior college is a good option. So I went to JUCO and uh, tore it up. Like that was probably my funnest year, my best year was that one year. And then I went over to the University of Rhode Island. But some people know the story, some people don't. Uh, we were getting ready to play the University of Florida. Okay. And before the season starts, the coaching staff will do one on one meetings with each player kind of let you know how much playing time you're going to get. And I had failed a drug test, okay, which I was unaware of. And I had a couple different options, but the NCAA really doesn't play around with this kind of stuff. So I ended up having to, to sit my junior year. That year was the year I auditioned for Are You The One? Because I wasn't playing. I wasn't traveling with the team. And next thing you know, you know, like five seasons later of this and that, you know, but if I could go back and that didn't happen, I would have been, that was my dream. That was my goal. Not so much reality TV, but you know, <laughs> it, well, everything happens for a reason, you know? Yeah. That's amazing story. So how did you end up wanting to get into reality television? You know, when I was a kid and even growing up, I always said I, I'd be, I don't even want to say famous because it's not fame. But I guess I always wanted to be known, right? I knew uh, I had some sort of a personality that, that could stick because uh, I felt like I was very outgoing. And I said, hey, why not? Let's give it a shot. And I auditioned. And it, it was like a three-month process for that first show. And every week that I got called to go on to the next round, I always felt like, okay, it's probably going to end here. And it just never did. <laughs> so you just kept riding with it. And you did yeah. four seasons of The Challenge. And – I, I was planning on saving the challenge stuff for later, but I guess we're here now. So uh, I do have some challenge questions for you. And sure. a lot of the listeners were wondering why you haven't been on in four years or so. Are you retired? I mean, that's a question for them. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I here's the thing. They made my last season, they really made it look as if I was sleeping all the time. Which was so, which was, it was false. That, that wasn't the truth. Was I actively seeking confrontation? No. Uh, I was kind of just there and they didn't like that. They, they pay you to 
play your character, play your role. And if you look at past seasons that I had done, I was just, I was more vocal, I was more active. And looking back, I, I, I wish I, I wish I wasn't as laid back, not for the purpose of being brought back, but for the, the reason that I, I have to deal with now, which is people thinking that I just slept the whole time and it just, that, that wasn't, that wasn't the case, but yeah, that's their decision. And I'm kind of, you know, my life has, has really propelled the last year or so, and I'm happy with what I'm doing. And, you know, I, I wish the best of those guys. So you, uh, something that I thought was really interesting. Yeah. And dirty 30, they made it look like you had kind of lost interest in the show. So you're saying that's not true at all. You were doing stuff, but they just didn't really uh, show it on the TV. Yeah, I, I, I would say I wasn't as enthusiastic about the show. That is a fact. But was I sleeping? No. But they had to make it out of, you know, they had to, they had to do something. I, the funny thing is I literally slept normal hours. Like I slept at night. And they turn it into some big thing but you know buna murray was great to me the, the, the whole the whole team over there they, they're good people and you know if, if something happens down the line i'd love maybe to do something with my brother like i'd love to share that experience with him again but me i'm not really itching at the bit to, to go on there man it's kind of it's prison it's not like this vacation you know yeah, you mentioned your brother, your first season, you guys, it was for those who don't have never seen the challenge, you were on a season where you and your brother competed alongside each other. And I thought what was interesting was you had really on the show, what we saw, it looked like you were really clashing with Johnny Bananas. But then you come back and on the next three seasons, it seems like you guys had a pretty good working relationship. So how did you guys, did you guys end up squashing your beef? What was that like? It was never really beef. I think he, going into that first season, we were young. We were talking a lot of smack, you know, good-looking guys. He, he he felt that threat, I think. But, um, you know, he is a great, great dude. And I knew he was a great dude. But I had to come into that first season with some steam behind me, and that's what we did. And it, and, and it, was, it was entertaining. It was great. That's why you tuned in. But going forward, Johnny's a great dude. Uh, we're still good friends to this day. I don't talk to him that frequently, but great guy, very smart, and you know nothing but good things to say about that guy. And you also on Rivals Three, they made a big deal out of uh, a deal that you had seemingly made with the rest of the guys in the house to try to throw him and his cousin in every yeah. chance you got, and then you yeah. ended up uh, working with those guys and getting to the top four. So I felt like that wasn't explained very well on the show. What happened there? Yeah. So, yeah, there was somewhat of an understanding that, hey, we're going to try to get these guys to go in against each other. If any of us has an opportunity, we're going to do it, blah, blah, blah. Easier said than done until you actually have control. Now that I have control, I knew that the ball was in my court. And at that time, what I did work. Right at the end of that season, it was the four of us. Okay, Devin, me, uh, Vince, and Johnny, and we were picking out of a, like out of a bucket. In in a perfect situation, Johnny would have went up against Vince, which was very close to happening at the end, which would have left Devin, me, and either Vince or Johnny, and there was a legitimate shot that we could have won that show. Worst case, came in second. So. It was a it was a good move. I don't regret it. And yeah, I would have appeased the house, but I wasn't there to appease the house. I was there to make money and further succeed or further progress on the show. So, you know, looking back, yeah, there was a soft understanding between all of us. And, you know, I did what I had to do to put us in the best position. I'm not looking out for everybody else. So, yeah, they didn't explain it too well. Yeah, I think it was weird that they gave you – well, I guess I understand why the guys in the house gave you crap because you didn't do what they were wanting you to do. Yeah. But I, I don't know if – I don't know what the fan reaction was or whatever because I, I wasn't paying attention to any of that. But, I mean, like, on Survivor, why would you want to be number five in an alliance when you could be number three? And you have a pretty yeah. much a, a free shot at the final three. Even if it is against tougher competitors, you have a chance to beat those guys. Yeah, I always felt like I was never in, 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 in the one or two slot for anyone. So I was really vouching for myself. And it's easy when you actually come up on a win for everyone to, to act 
as if you're in a higher position than you actually are. I wasn't really tied in, tied in with anyone. So when I had the opportunity to say, hey, listen, I'm not going to do this, but I need this. I took it, you know, and uh, Nicole was great. She was a great partner. She had her ears and everything. She was light. She was easy to carry if we needed to. Like, I had a really, really good time that season. And, you know, it's unfortunate we fell short, but we were, that was as close as I've, I've gotten. So, Was that your favorite season that you did? Uh, I think so. I had it. I had a blast. Like we, we ended up, we went to Argentina after Mexico and yeah, it was a great time. Whereas the first season, you think that all that animosity and confrontation is cool and funny on TV, but it really created a sense of, I don't want to be here. Like this is, I don't know. It was almost us against them and it wasn't a good experience that first show. So coming back on the second one, it really, it turned things around. Do you have a least favorite season that you did? Uh, probably my last one. Yeah, I mean, probably my last one. A lot of things have changed. They, they're, they're a lot more restrictive now. Back in the day, even before I got there, they gave you a day off. Let's say it was Sunday. And it was free rain that day. You could go out into whatever town, cell phones. I mean, you could do what you wanted. It was a true day off. Now... Everything's super monitored, super restricted. You can't do X, you can't do Y, you can't do Z. It, it's it's a different environment. So, you know, I think as as the show is getting, I don't know, going on longer, they're making it a little bit more miserable to kind of go, go into. Well, I'll be blunt. I feel like they're making it more miserable for the viewer because – the last couple seasons I've watched, it doesn't, and it really, I think for the last few seasons, it doesn't look like anyone's having fun. And I, I watch, I don't watch reality TV for something ultra serious. I just want to watch something that's fun and silly and people having fun. Right. Yeah. It, 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 they, I heard on the last season, they blacked out the windows on the bus and it's just, it's, it's all psychological BS. I got a great life. I'm very happy with, with what I'm doing. I, I, I'm not looking for notoriety. I'm not looking for any more attention. So the show is just not, it's not something that I'm actively seeking to participate in again. But that being said, it was a great experience. It was a great time in my life. And if there's an opportunity down the line, then maybe, but it, it's, it's difficult now, you know, and, and that's the problem with the shows is, You'll go film for three months, come back. The rest of the world keeps moving and you had to put everything on pause. It's really difficult to develop any sort of professional consistency in the workforce when you're leaving every four months. You know, no one's really going to take you serious. So for me, I, long term, I knew it, it was going to be hard to build any sort of momentum. So I think that's why I started to slowly not be as interested Makes sense. All right. My last challenge question. I think you had said this on one season, unless I had some weird, crazy dream and I just imagined this, but were you living with Leroy at one point? I was. Yeah. And I brought this up. I was getting a haircut yesterday and I was telling, <laughs> uh, I forget who it was, but yeah, for a short period, I was in transition from apartments and I needed a place to stay. This was, this was a, a tough time. And, and it's funny because people think everyone on the challenge has all this money and this and that. And it's not that way, right? Because you're not working. You work for two months while you're on the show. You come back to debt and past bills that you didn't pay. You pay them all. And then the cycle starts over again. So it was a tough period. And I was adjusting and trying to just get my feet under me. And I was staying with Leroy. And I talked to Leroy multiple times a week. Um, he's, a, he's literally like a brother. Uh, we, we we're, that that's family, and I really appreciate him. He's the reason that I even moved to Vegas. So he left, and I stayed. So that. <laughs> Dang, that's too bad. All right, well, Dario, we have so much sports to get into today. So let's lead off here with what I think is probably the biggest uh, national sports story of the week, at least in in my personal life, and that is the uh, college football playoff. Being this is a new. 
uh, proposal for the college football playoff to expand from four teams to 12 teams. Now, for the listeners, here's a little bit of what you may have missed. This is going to mean that the top six conference champions will get an automatic bid, and then there will be six at-large bids. Now, there's no limit on the number of teams selected from a conference. So, theoretically, you could have seven Uh, teams. teams. Yeah, seven SEC teams. That would be, oh boy, that would not be fun. Uh, The top four conference champs are going to get a bye. So that's pretty much forcing Notre Dame to join a conference because they can't get a bye otherwise. And then uh, home games for teams ranked five through eight. Dario, what do you think about potentially expanding this uh, postseason? I like it. I think college football... The postseason is just, I don't know, it's kind of, I don't want to say confusing because there's not a lot of teams, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I like the mix up. I think college football is a, a huge money maker for the NCAA and, you know, expanding on the teams just brings brings more views. It brings more, uh, more attention. So I like the mix up, you know, not to jump ship, but I didn't realize that baseball made a extra innings change where a runner starts on second base. So it seems like all sports are doing these, these, I mean, that's not as a, as big of a deal as the playoffs, but um, to answer your question, I like it. I like to add more teams. I like to give more teams an opportunity, but I wish they would cap the amount of teams that can come from one conference because, you know, what about the PAC 12 and mountain West and just giving these teams that just giving them an opportunity to upset an sec team in my opinion, it's a lot funner to watch than Georgia and Missouri right. playing each other. You know, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to see all SEC stuff. I think ideally what the best case scenario would be is a version of this where all 10 conference champs, so you have your Power 5 and your Group of 5, they all get an automatic bid, and it can become something like the NCAA tournament, That, as you're saying. So then uh, Ball State, San Jose State, all those teams yeah, get a shot. What, that's what's fun. When you, when you see, like, Akron taking on Duke and taking them down to the wire, that's what makes college uh, sports interesting. These guys work, and these guys, you know, the mid-major schools, Steph Curry and Davidson, like, those are moments that, as fans, we'll never forget. Yeah, absolutely. So I could be great. I think ultimately over time what you would end up seeing is a more equal playing field because right now, as it's set up, if you're a recruit, if you're a five star, you're going to want to go to one of these five or six teams that plays in the playoff every year. But now you're talking about, oh, well, Ball State is a team that wins. Let's just say hypothetically they win the MAC three years in a row and get in. Now, all of a sudden, some of those recruits are going to move into Muncie, Indiana. And then ultimately what you end up doing is you level out the playing field. It's not going to happen overnight. It would happen over time. And then uh, the other thing I like is you pull in more regional interest across the country because right now i mean look at this last year you had two teams from the midwest and two teams from the southeast if you expand this thing as you mentioned and we get oregon in there and we get uh you know someone from the northeast then you're bringing in all the regions of the country and there's going to be more buzz and more interest i absolutely agree i do college football you know there's just so many good things uh, around college football um, that I think I think mixing it up and, and getting out of the traditional playoff um, outlook or overview will, will it'll, it'll, it'll lead to good things. Yeah. So Dario, I know you're very much uh, enjoying the college baseball super regionals right now. Have you been uh, watching that all weekend? All weekend. Watch Virginia. Not a Virginia fan, but I love watching Mississippi State. Ooh, uh, yeah, they were down like four right or now. five runs against Notre Dame. Came back and won. Yeah, those guys can ball, man. LSU is playing right now. Um, I, I I told my girlfriend that I want to take a trip to Omaha. I've always wanted to go to the College World Series. She has no idea what that is, but um, <laughs> you know, it's it's just a great environment. These guys play hard, and college baseball. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. I Nothing it. like it. Very special. And uh, we also had Oklahoma Sooners winning the college softball uh, national mm. championship over Florida State this past week. And I really enjoy watching the softball uh, playoffs as well. Yeah, Jenny Finch 
you know, that, that's what I remember when I think of college, <laughs> right. college soft, USA softball. But, um, yeah, those girls can play too. You know, they, they, those, those girls are no joke. But, uh, yeah, I don't watch too much softball, to be honest. But every now and again, I pop it on, you know, if it's on ESPN. Who is your pick in the College World Series? Uh, well, I love – I like Tennessee a lot, a lot. Those guys are uh, are balling. I'm going to wait until I see all the teams that get in, and then I love rooting for, you know, the Fresno State of the world. Um, but I don't have a particular team. I, you know, URI is my team, but they're not, they're not in there. Um, but, yeah, I like Tennessee. I follow all of these. I follow Tennessee, Mississippi State. I love Vandy. Um, Jack Leiter is an oh, absolute yeah. savage at Vanderbilt. Love watching that guy pitch. Um, but, yeah, no team particularly. I think I'm just a fan of the sport that I, I, I enjoy all the games. Yeah, it's it's so fun to watch, especially getting a look at some of these guys who are going to get their names called. And oh, yeah. uh, pretty soon the draft's coming up. In fact, I think they typically the draft is happening right around now. They may have pushed that back this year. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And they find out while they're playing. It's pretty – it's pretty dope, man. I can't wait to one day because I, I plan on coaching as much as I possibly can in the future. I just I don't have a kid yet, so I'm not. Right. I don't love it that much where I'm going to go coach. But <laughs> one day, um, you know, going through the ranks, it, 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 there's there's not much better than baseball and Sunday night baseball. I love other than hearing Alex Rodriguez. But oh yeah, that, guy, that guy's Ooh. pretty awful. I don't understand how he got that job. Like he's got to have the greatest agent in the world. He was wildly unpopular MLB as a player. Him. MLB loves him. Like, you know, he's guys, you got guys like Barry Bonds that can't walk down the street for what they did. And then Alex does the same thing and lies and lies and lies. And I used to be a big A-Rod fan. I, I don't hate him, but he's just bad he's, at calling baseball games. Yeah, I don't think he's the greatest. Like he, if you watch a lot of the uh, Chicago Cubs games, he loves to hate on Javi Baez. And it, it like, it gets me so mad. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't, if you hear him talking about hitting, I don't agree with what he says. Now, he's one of the greatest hitters of all time. So who am I? But I like, uh, I like guys like Josh Donaldson. Um, if you watch, he has a lot of hitting videos online and, and just his, his ideology behind hitting. I agree much more with than what A-Rod has out there. So. I, I can't understand it. I mean, Ryan Braun, you mentioned guys who lie. Ryan Braun, I believe, is having his number retired either later this season or next season. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, you see what happened with uh, Robinson Cano. Robinson Cano got pinched twice. And um, the Mets signed him for a bunch of money. And the, the GM that signed him was like a buddy of his from, I think, when he was in Seattle. Now yes. they fired that guy. Cohen's in New York. And I don't know what's going to happen with Cano's future. You know, and now you have the scandal going on. Not scandal, but like the whole stuff that the pitchers are putting on their gloves and their hats. Like, there's a lot of funny business going on. I don't know. Who's the, who's the commissioner again? What's his name? Rob Manfred. No one yep. likes that guy either. <laughs> He's so, I mean, commissioners never are popular, but he yeah, is so not. wildly <laughs> unpopular compared well, to Sealy, all the other commissioners. But Sealy, like, during the whole steroid era, the guy turned his head. You know, yeah. that was such a profitable era for them. Uh, it's just funny how some guys get the green light, like A-Rod and other guys. You, you know, Roger Clemens is like, they, they hate him. Yeah. And it's weird, but you mentioned the uh, foreign substance issue with pitchers. It sounds like we're going to have some kind of a plan in place coming up over the next uh, few days or so. This thing is near its end, it sounds like. Um, the pitchers have been on their best behavior. What are your thoughts in general about the um, Major League Baseball cracking down on this thing? I get rid of it. I yeah. think I think it's... It, it, it's an extreme advantage. And I don't know if I'm hitting and I see someone touching their hat and I'm just, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't like it. And yeah, major league baseball needs to do something about it. You can't just ride this gray area and kind of add eh, this and that. Cause 
guys are putting up stats right now, and it's not fair for pitchers that aren't using it, especially if it's a contract year. This is how these guys feed their family. Why should one one guy be able to put stuff on his finger, lower that ERA, and be more attractive come trade time? And I just, I don't know. I, I think they should. They right now it's public. It's known. They need to figure out a solution and put an end to it now, while while we can, and not just let this thing linger. But we'll see. If I get rich, I'm going to buy a minor league team and then buy a major league team. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think you're right. I mean, this what I do. I got to give the MLB a lot of credit here because they're acting on this thing in the middle of the season, which they never do. Uh, it's clearly an issue. Nobody's really hitting anymore. Anyway, we want balls in play. The game's more exciting when you get balls in play, plays at the plate. Uh, and so I think that for them and again, over the last uh, couple of years, they've had to deal with getting these games played with COVID and everything like that. So it couldn't be at the top of their priorities for them to kind of crack down on this in the middle of the season. It might be a little messy, but hopefully they get a good plan in place. And uh, yeah, I mean, this thing, for those that don't know, I feel like there are a lot of people that don't know that this stuff is illegal and the umps have basically just been letting everyone get away with it. And every now, every once and again, every once in a while, they blow the whistle on some guy. Yeah, I mean, there's just no – you can't call some guys and not call other guys. That that That's the issue. It's one way or the other. And who was it that was making a, a joke about it? And I was using it. Uh, what's the guy over there in L.A.? Um, Bauer. Bauer. Yeah, Bauer's a – he's a character, that guy. <laughs> right. He's a character. But, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. We'll see. So, Dario, are you a Red Sox fan? Are those your guys? Oh, yeah, big Red Sox fan. The problem is I don't get the games out here. I work so much that I don't have the MLB package because I don't have the time. But I get to see Sunday night is always a great time. The Braves are always on. A buddy of mine loves Freddie Freeman, so it's good to see those guys. I, I don't mind. Like I said, I am a Red Sox fan. Diehard. Grew up going to Fenway Park. Pedro Martinez, Roger Clemens, Yankee Sox. That, that was my entire upbringing. But... I am a baseball fan. So you put the Dodgers and Diamondbacks on, I'm happy. As long as there's baseball, I'm good. I love the Padres. Fernando Tatis is like, this guy's unbelievable. He, I think he's leading the National League right now in home runs. He had another one today. So. Grand Slam. Yeah, he, that yeah. guy's a problem. <laughs> so we do have, uh, we can take a look at some of the scores from the weekend. So, Sunday night tonight, we have the Cubs and the Cardinals, and the Cubs are about to sweep the Cardinals at home. Cubs are and... good, man. Someone needs to tell Jock Peterson, no, he's not that good. Jock <laughs> Peterson is so arrogant. I'm like, dude, you're not that good. You're not that good. You're like, you know, he's a fly ball guy. He gets under it, fucking win takes it, and see you later. And I don't know. I, I think he's just he's probably a good guy, but he's way too arrogant. He's way too arrogant. But, yeah, the Cubs are really good. They're doing well. You see Anthony Rizzo with that. He had, like, a 14-pitch at bat and then hits a laser. Dude, yeah. That stuff's not easy. These guys are freaks. I have been – I live here in Chicago. I've been very pleasantly surprised with the Cubs. I think there are three big surprise teams right now across the sport. And this is a team that I thought – oh, I guess I'll start with the Cubs. I – thought the Cubs were going to be selling pieces off here coming up at the deadline. They're at a point right now. They're at half a game out of first place. They win tonight. They remain in first place tied to the Brewers yeah. and the Cubs are going to be, have to be That's buying the if they keep winning here. Now I think the number one priority needs to be retaining Chris Bryant at this point. You need to bring back Chris Bryant. If you can bring so back Chris Bryant. Let go, let go of Javi. Well, I like Javi. I just think the thing with Javi is, I mean, he's hitting right now. He's, 220. Yeah, he's, he's just he's, he's right. up and down. He he was real cold. He swings at a lot of balls. He's kind of a guy that you could probably get a lot of money for now, but his numbers aren't. I just don't. He's not consistent. I think the perfect situation for the Cubs right now, and I think it's realistic. Give Chris Bryant more money than any other team will. That's number one. Get Rizzo to come back, and you know Rizzo is going to be age thirty-two, age thirty-three. He's not going to be overly expensive. And then try to get Javi to do a one-year prove-it contract. So then Javi has that opportunity 
sticks on the team another year and then he can try to get that big contract because I, I, I struggle to give him a kind of Tatis type contract if he's only going to hit for power and he's going to strike, lead the league in strikeouts. Yeah. Could, well, if they offer him a one year, it, why wouldn't he take a, you know, an eight year somewhere else? Like if the money's on the table, I guess if he wants to stay in Chicago, but. Well, I think, I think his dollar value right now is going down based on the way he played last year. And uh, I mean, he hasn't been bad this year, but he hasn't been, I mean, he was an MVP candidate just a few years ago. So if he can come back, put together an MVP caliber year, I think he could really uh, bring his value back up going into the next. Uh, and also take a look at the free agent class for shortstops this year. It's insane. You got Seager. Uh, you got Correa, you got, um, uh, well, Lindor's off the market now. There are a bunch of names. Oh, Brandon eight. Crawford is having a great year. Um, so next year, he hits the market as the top shortstop. He'd get more money. What dictates, I was watching UFC Moneyball. I'm sure you watch Moneyball. Oh, of course, well, yeah. I, I mean, I get big markets like New York, Boston. They have more money to give these players. But what actually dictates their payroll budget? Is it like the financial strength of ownership or is it the market and ticket sales like why why is the payroll so little in oakland but so high in boston i get the obvious one's oakland one's boston but this ownership network have have anything to do with how much money a team can spend it doesn't the owner can spend as much money as they want. Now, obviously they have the luxury tax threshold. If you, and that's where the Yankees are sitting right now. Like if the Yankees are going to get taxed extra, if they go over that cap uh, and maybe they will with, if say they don't have a very good team this year. Um, But yeah, no, it's, I mean, they can spend as much money as they want to spend, but typically teams that own the Yankees, the Cubs or the Red Sox are richer they they have more money. Uh, now Cohen has a ton of money, so he's going to spend big with the Mets. But uh, I mean, like the Rays aren't generating the same amount of revenue, so they're not worth as much to buy. So you're generally probably going to have an owner that just doesn't have as much money as the Ricketts family in Chicago. Got it. Yeah, it's tough, man. It's tough to buy a team nowadays. Like even if you're really rich, it, it takes a lot. Like a lot of things to go your way so it must be a great great thing though imagine owning a baseball team wow. oh man that'd be the dream you and me we gotta make it big yeah, by man. uh by the rays or no what team what team do you think we could buy who's gonna be sold next? Uh, mariners yeah um who's a dog crap team <laughs> uh, i mean the rockies yeah colorado yeah 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 um yeah, I don't know. The <laughs> aren't really okay. Let me see who the worst teams are. <laughs> and as you do that, uh, we can continue talking about these surprise teams. So, number one, I say Chicago Cubs. Uh, number two, I'll give you your Boston Red Sox. I did not think that the Red Sox were going to be a game and a half yeah, out of first place. Well. Yeah, they're doing real well. I think they're in it for the long haul. They can slug better than pretty much any other team in the AL. Hey, we're buying the Orioles. Orioles. Orioles yeah, <laughs> Orioles or Indians. But oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Red Sox are doing well. And they got they got some young guys. They got some pieces. I don't get to watch them, though, as much. So I'd be lying if I said that I knew, the, you know, I know Dawback. Uh, that kid's good. I love Xander. Uh, Bogarts. I love Devers. The Sox, man. We're spoiled in Boston. I grew up going to parades. Every year was a championship year, whether it was the Bruins, the Celtics, the Patriots, the Red Sox. We just, that's what we did. And I have jokes with my buddies out here, like, listen, you, there, because everyone goes crazy for the nights. And I'm like, I get it. I remember my first, you know, my first <laughs> playoff win, or whatever. Um, but we're spoiled in Boston. So it's good to see that they're, they're, they're turning the year into something. We'll see how, you know, how the second half of the year plays out and then going into the playoffs if they're able to hold stride. So the Red Sox, they ended up losing 203 uh, at home against the Blue Jays. But again, they've been having a great year. The third team, top three teams, most surprising to me. 
and we're like midway through June now. It's we're uh, moving along here, and I think these mm-hmm. teams now. For a while, I was waiting for the Cubs to tail off. I was waiting for the Red Sox to tail off. Team number three, maybe this is a team you've gotten to watch because they are out on the West Coast. The San Francisco Giants have been Mm. right around first place, in and out of first place. And I've been saying it for weeks on this show. I say they're probably going to be sellers. But at this point, it's looking like that team's also going to be in it for the long haul. Yeah, the Giants, they got uh, Yashremski. He's good out right. Uh, Crawford. I haven't been able to watch too many of their games. You know, I, I like the White Sox, though. White oh, Sox yeah. are doing well. I like Mercedes. Uh, I get to see more of their games. Um, but, yeah, the, the Giants, I, 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 I don't have an opinion just because I, I have not been able to see them. I get a lot of Dodger games. A lot of I don't, the Braves get a ton of national coverage. They do. Um, but, yeah, I think the White Sox are surprising as well. So uh, I, I, I've always been a big uh, Brandon Crawford fan. He's with the Giants, isn't he? Yeah. yeah he's, he's like good. he's leading shortstops and homers this year. He's having a great yeah, year. Dude, he's a big guy. People don't think that That guy's like 6'2", 6'3". He's a big dude. But, uh, yeah, Mike Yastrzemski played at St. John's Prep, which is about 15 minutes from where I grew up. My freshman year, he was a junior. And he was good. And then he went on to Vandy. And he kind of worked his way up through the minors. But he's making himself into a legit, you know, a legit big leaguer. Yeah, he's really good. Did you play against him or play with him? Never played against him. I did see, you know, I went to a couple of games. I was so young. I was, my freshman year, my brother played varsity baseball. I didn't, surprisingly. And my brother stopped playing. But my brother was, as a freshman, he was starting shortstop. Wow. uh, On the varsity team, yeah. Then my sophomore year, he made 18 errors. And forget about it. Mentally, (laughs) the guy was shocked. It was oh. never the same again. Yeah. I could always hit. So there was always a spot for me. I could defend too, but my brother struggled at the plate. So when you're coming up, if you can break, you'll have opportunities at any level. If you're a good defender, you have to be a, a, a plus 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 defender to make it to, to, to the elite level or even get drafted. Unless you're fast. Speed also gets you in. Are there any other big leaguers that you grew up playing close to them or playing with them? Uh, let's see. Uh, yep, Ben Bowden, who's a uh, he's a closer reliever with the Rockies, and we played together many many summers. He's a funny dude, good dude. I'm gonna definitely go out and see him. Um, I want to go out and watch him play. I'd love to go out to Colorado. But, uh, yeah, Ben Bowden, a good friend of mine. I never played against him, but he's a good friend of mine. His name is Devin Travis. He played with the Blue Jays for a while. He's really good. Had uh, He had some injuries recently, but shout out to Devin Travis. Great guy, and he was an, he was an absolute stud when he played with the Jays. That's awesome, Dario. You mentioned the White Sox, and I feel like I'm in the minority right now. But I think at this point you could see – and I don't know if the press would actually allow it to happen. AL Manager of the Year, Tony Larusa. NL Manager of the Year, David Ross. No, you're shaking your head. You're Tony out on Larusa. Larusa. After what he said with Mercedes, dude, his players don't even respect him. The guys in like well, the ninth- but the teams, the teams winning. No, no, the teams winning. The teams doing good. I, I had a very old school coach in high school, and I liked him, and he liked me, and it was cool. But. Tony La Russa does remind me of that. He's stuck in like the 70s. And yeah, they're winning. They're great. But I, I, I didn't like that that whole scenario. I didn't like how he handled it. So maybe that's just a personal thing with me. But, you, you know, numbers don't lie. Uh, I Who did you say for the uh, NL? Well, I was just saying both uh, managers in Chicago. I think you could see oh, that. Yeah, yeah, the Cubs. Who is it, David Ross? David Ross, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I, lo- I I haven't been to Wrigley, so I could either go to San Diego and see Tatis. This is something that I want to do in the next couple of weeks. Go to Wrigley, stop in Chicago, and do like the real, real, the real thing, um, or go to New York, see my brother, Yankee Stadium. But the Yankees kind of suck, so but <laughs> the city of New York makes up for that. The rest of that trip. I'm trying to I'm trying to piece something together. I like I think I think Wrigley would be fun. 
It would be very fun. I would be happy to have you here. Chicago, we got two baseball teams in Milwaukee, not too far down the road. And those tickets are cheap, too, Milwaukee. I bet. How, how are the uh, Cubs tickets? Cubs tickets are pricey. But we just reopened on Friday. First, uh, first game, full capacity. So uh, won't be as bad as it's been in the past. But I, th- I think you're, you're doing pretty well, Dario. I think you can afford yeah, those tickets. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um okay i'll run through some of these series just the results and if you got any other thoughts you can add them okay so we got the a's taking four game sweep of the kansas city royals out in oakland uh a's are playing some great baseball the marlins take what was that matt chapman oh yeah oh yeah uh marlins take two of three against the braves and you've seen the braves play a lot this year I don't think the Braves have it this year. I picked them to no, win I mean, the World Series. They need to pay Freddie Freeman. They need to pay Freddie Freeman. I don't understand. This guy's MVP, and, like, they're digging him around. I don't get it. they got to pay that guy. I'm not a big Dansby Swans, whatever, Swansea fan. <laughs> um, Swanson. Swanson, I love yeah. Acuna. I love Albies. I like the team, but they got to pay Freddie Freeman. He may end up in Boston if they're not careful, so. Oh, he'll pay him. He'll come to us. <laughs> but yeah, so what? They got swept. You said by the Marlins. Uh, two or three. Marlins take two or three. But yeah. I mean, this this Braves team is like three or four games below five hundred. We're in mid June. I kept saying they're going to turn the corner eventually. Ozuna's probably not going to play again this year uh, for what he did. Uh, and that contract. What, is that? what did he do? Uh, he may have beaten up his girlfriend. We don't know what the information That's is yet. Yeah. No, 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 no. I know. I, I know. You were just kind of laughing at how I, I said it. I didn't think you were going to say that. Yeah. That's not what I expected. Yeah. Um, but it actually, I think if they're able to void that contract, it could end up being a blessing in disguise for the Braves in the long run. Because his skills, I mean, that guy looks like he's declining. They gave him a lot of money for the next five years. They can get out of that contract. They could be one of these teams that uh, is able to spend big this winter on one of these maybe Chris Bryant type guys. It says Braves likely cannot void Marcel. Ooh, contract. yikes. Yeah, that team, uh, I mean, it's just like, you know, it's been one bad thing after another. They lost him. They had Soroka have to go back in and have exploratory surgery on his ruptured Achilles. Um, Oscar Enoa broke his hand. Did you hear about this? How he broke his hand? No, he punched uh, the dugout wall. I don't know if you've ever seen anyone do that, but that he broke his hand doing that. So it's very foolish yeah. behavior. I, whenever I think of uh, trying to avoid contracts or not pay a play or whatever, uh, I think of Jacoby Ellsbury, and he missed so much time, and the Yankees had to keep and keep paying them. It was like. 19 million a year for the guy to sit home with his kids. Yeah, that was that was an awful contract. It was it was really bad. Yankees are not playing good baseball, as you mentioned. Uh, they lose, they get swept in a short two game stand with the Phillies. At they're home. still playing in Buffalo, right? That's the Blue Jays. Yeah, they're still playing in Buffalo. Blue Jays. Why don't yeah. they go back to Canada though, since COVID's like done? Well. Canada's not done with COVID, I guess, would be the answer. Dumb question. <laughs> no, it's, it's all good. Yeah, so uh, the Blue Jays, they take two of three from the Red Sox this weekend. Uh, Yankees get swept by the Phillies. Have you paid any attention to the Yankees this year? I have. I have. Yeah, they're struggling. And it's crazy because at the beginning of the season, those, those names, you look that lineup up and down, there's no reason. Those guys are, are are top, you know, Stanton, uh, LeMayu. Those guys are good, man. But I don't know. Aaron Boone got his got his work cut out for him. He needs to figure it out. Like, there's no reason with that payroll, that budget, that team, and those guys that they have that they should be struggling like they are. I mean, the Red Sox went in there and, you know, made them their daddy. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the uh, Yankees. Also Pedro Martinez, love that guy. Mr. Oh, Dave. absolute best. That uh, TBS post game studio show that they did last year oh, in the playoffs. Your daddy. Yeah, yeah, absolute best one for baseball. It's like they captured Buddy the Thomas. magic. Yeah, 
Yeah. No, no, no. Frank's on the – what was that? Wait, I think there's two different ones. There's Jimmy yeah. Rollins, Pedro. Curtis yeah, Granderson. Yeah. Ernie Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Then the other one is A-Rod, Frank Thomas, David Ortiz, who I love. Yeah. David Ortiz is funny. But, yeah, yeah, A-Rod works his way in, man. I don't know. That guy must be a salesman. <laughs> I love the Turner crew. It's kind of like they captured the magic that their Turner TNT basketball they have with those great shows. And they brought that, and it's just really fun. Uh, Pedro's is. hilarious. I love that crew. Yeah, it is. Yeah, TNT does a good job with the NBA. That that they're funny. So we have uh, the Angels sweep the uh, Diamondbacks, and that's that's an Angels team that it, I don't think is good. I don't think that this really means anything for them. The Diamondbacks, however, are terrible. The Diamondbacks last – do you, do you know the last time they won a road game, Dario? Um, I don't, but I didn't know they were that bad. They, Yeah, they're really bad this year. Uh, they, <laughs> they've lost 18 straight road games. The last road game they won was the Bumgarner no-hitter that they said was not a no-hitter because it was only a seven-inning game out in Atlanta. That was April 25th. So you got to bet on them. Right now they're in San Francisco. They got a game on Monday. So you're telling me that I should I should lay the bag down. That's what you're telling me. Well, I don't want to be held liable if you or any of the listeners lose money. But, uh, yeah, wink, wink, uh, maybe there's something there. Wow, 18 straight. Well, Dodgers are going to Arizona next week. They should – that could be a game to go down and check out. I'm in a real neutral spot in Vegas. I can I can get to LA in a couple hours. I can get to San Diego in a couple hours. I can go to Arizona. I can go to Denver. So I've, I've been itching to, to get to a game. You know what? A ballpark that's really fun to go to that's close is Angel Stadium in Orange County. Yeah, I've been Very there. Yeah, small, beautiful, cheap, and you know, it, it, they're not like the fans don't get all riled up. But it's a good it's a good place to kind of kick back and watch a game. Yeah. So you haven't been to a Diamondbacks game yet, have you? No. Okay. I'm, sure I'm going the out there and I'm, I'm going out there in September if you want to join me and my boys. Come through. Maybe I yeah. will, dude. Yeah, dude. Okay. Um. Let's see. We got the Brewers are playing some great baseball. They sweep the Pirates. Not too much going on there, but they are in first place. Uh, the Cardinals, as I mentioned, they're fading out of the picture in the NL Central. They've had a lot of injuries. They lost Jack Flaherty for six to eight weeks. They decimated with their pitching staff. Brewers are healthy now with Yelich. Ever since Yelich came back, they're scoring runs. They're playing good baseball. They've been on a huge hot streak. Uh, Brewers are a pretty good team. Yeah, I'm, uh, I like I like Yelich. I don't get to see them. I have not watched a game with the Brewers. So I can't tell you how I feel about them, but I do see that they are playing well looking at the standings. Yeah, they're playing well. The Astros take two of three from the Twins. Uh, the Blue Jays, as I mentioned, take two of three uh, in Boston this weekend. The Indians take two of three from the Mariners. Mets take two of three from the Padres. Mets are actually a good team. This is I'm not, I'm not used to this. It's weird. Yeah, I remember the remember Mike Piazza, Shea Stadium. They could bring back any sort of that magic if they, they get into the playoffs. Ooh, great, great environment. Um, I like Cole Bichette and the Blue Jays, though. I like those guys. I like Vladdy Guerrero. I don't like that they beat the Red Sox. But All right. I think there's a lot of good young talent in Major League Baseball right now. You know, are we getting, like, crazy home runs like, you know, Barry Bonds and McGuire? No, but there's a lot of good talent. We got a lot of – a lot of young guys making noise. So I, I love Major League Baseball. I love watching it more than ever. So. Yeah, it's been – I mean, there's so many good guys. Uh, do you have a favorite of these under-25 guys? Dude, I have so many. Love Tatis. Love Bichette. Acuna. Uh, love Acuna. Soto. You know, a buddy of mine's like, man, you love, you love the flashy guys. But if you're flashy and good, there's no problem with that. You're good. You can do whatever you want. Um, you know, Bogart isn't flashy. I like him, you know, but I don't like anyone any less because they are flashy, you know. But, yeah, I, I, I really like watching uh, Tatis. I save a lot of hitting videos, and I mean, like, a lot of hitting videos, and a lot of them are Tatis. Um, I'm real into 
breaking down swings and just really being a student of hitting. Because I think what guys do at that level isn't taught at a younger level for whatever reason. Not that they need to be swinging for the fences at nine, but the the mechanics and how you actually like rotate should be taught. And there's a lot of people teaching BS that they're not doing in the big league. So, so you, you of the game. I'm, what you're saying is you don't like launch angle would be my guess. Well, I don't like like hands to the ball. Um, like swinging down, um, like they, they, people, A Rock says in a lot of his, his videos when he talks hitting that he swings down to get backspin on the ball, so then it, it, it goes up, and that's just not, if you watch the swing, that's not what he's doing. But, no, <laughs> um, you know, to each his own, right? I think when I have kids, I'll let, I'll let that do the talking because we know where their swing came from. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, 2 2 split between the Giants out in Washington. Uh, we had two, uh, three more sweeps in addition to the Angels and the A sweeping their series. The Reds sweep the Colorado Rockies. So the Reds mm-hmm. are actually sitting at right around 500. Uh, they're starting to play some good baseball. So maybe the Reds are in it. Do, do you, have you seen the Reds at all? Yeah. Shout out to Amir Garrett. Right? Or should I call him? I should call him a boxer. The guy's always fighting. But uh, yeah, I think that the Reds, the Reds are are an interesting team. They got a lot of guys that don't like to button their jerseys. They keep them low, you know. Um, is Joey Votto playing? Yeah, I think he he's. I don't know if he's back yet, but he's been injured for much of the year. Uh, he should be back soon, I believe. Yeah. If he isn't back they're, already, they're a good team. I, I would not want to be in Ohio, but. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't get to watch that too much. Uh, the Red Sweep, the White Sox Sweep, the Tigers, and we're setting up right now. The Rays Sweep, the Baltimore Orioles, our future team. Uh, so mm-hmm. keep losing those games, Baltimore. Dario and I are going to buy the team in 10 years. So Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the uh, we have the White Sox and the Rays, the class of the American League right now. The Rays are 42 and 24, Sox 41 and 24, and they're playing these next three days in Chicago. Uh, Rays have won 28 of their last 33. So it's looking like those are the two best teams in the American League. And I don't really know if anyone's close to them at this time, uh, but that should be a great series. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's still early. I'm, I'm looking at this game. Yeah, at this time, that. at this time. I'm not saying. For sure. I just mean through the, the first what, yeah. three games up on the Sox. It's only a matter of time before we jump in there. Yankees are going to catch fire. Um, you know, and you like the Blue Jays that, too. That used to pitch for Tampa. Who was the, the lefty that went to San Diego? Like Snell. Great. Great. I love that guy. Um, I have not watched the Braves, though, so I'm very surprised that they're in first place. It'd be interesting to watch some of their games and see what they're doing well because it looks like they're what they're well, they're 23 and 10 on the road, so they're they're winning away from home. Yeah, they're they're really good. Uh, Blake Snell's actually having a mediocre year. He's like around a four or five ERA up to this point. Um, and you know what was really interesting, mm-hmm. Dario? I just had Arrestus on here. Uh, and he it does the pregame and the postgame for the Rays. He told me that Blake Snell was going to get traded regardless of what happened in the World Series. That was a foregone conclusion. They were going to get rid of him no matter what? They were clashing already because, I mean, look at what the Rays do. It's not something that's advantageous for guys to get paid a whole lot, and this is something we talked about. A lot of it is not only service time manipulation, but – arbitration manipulation. So something we see a lot is Luis Patino, who is the centerpiece of that Blake Snell trade. He's had so many stat lines where he pitches four and two thirds, four and one third. And it's like, he can't get like, why on earth you can leave him in there and have him get one more out. But you know what, when he's not starting the game, when he's not, or when he is starting the game and he's not getting the win, that brings his arbitration number down significantly. So the Rays are masters of manipulating and getting wow. these guys. Yeah. I didn't, that's crazy. So if he goes longer than four and a third or whatever, then it's considered a loss, which would hurt him in arbitration. Well, you need, 
you need five innings to get a win. So you pitch four and two if as a starter. So if you pitch four and two thirds and the team wins, you don't get a win on your record. Wow. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know it was that in depth. Damn. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. So, so they're like the owner, the, the manager knows to pull strings at certain times. Who's the manager? A uh, Rocco Kevin Baldelli. Cash. Oh no, where's Rocco Baldelli at? Minnesota. Oh okay. Kevin Cash. Yeah. Not not a fan. <laughs> but no. I mean, like, so so anyway, Snell had he hasn't pitched in the sixth inning since 2019, like May 2019. And he was really frustrated, and rightfully so. So he already wanted out of there. It sounded like that relationship wasn't something that could be repaired. Uh, it was the wrong decision to pull him in that spot. But the Rays, I mean, you got to give them credit. When They're they, doing. When they pulled him, though. It was later than the fifth, wasn't it? Uh, maybe. So yeah, it was later than the fifth. Um, it, I'm talking regular season, I guess. I should uh, say. Uh, do you yeah. remember though that when he took him out of that like crucial spot in the playoffs? Yeah. That yeah. was oh my god, that was so fresh. That was crazy. Yeah. Kevin Cash took a lot of heat for that. Yeah, he did. And I mean like it was a wrong decision, but I think Kevin Cash is a really good manager. That's their thing. Um I think that sometimes like like hey, that works well for them to save money and it does win them a lot of games, but in the postseason, you got to have feel. It's not just about a computer. Like you're talking about money ball you have to have your finger on the pulse and what's going on in the dugout. There's a human element to this game. You can't just insert guys in like a computer software and expect them to do whatever. Um, in a playoff game, it's best to have one pitch. If one guy's cruising, you should leave him in there as long as you can because you get in there as a reliever and that guy's got to get a feel for the game. And sometimes the moment's too big for that reliever. So yeah, 100% is the wrong decision. Obviously, yeah, guys, guys, it takes it takes time to, you know, it's like that's why pinch hitting is so tough. You're coming in off the bench and guy, you got Chapman on there throwing 103 in the eighth. Good luck. Yeah, Not yeah. <laughs> so Dario, is there anything else baseball related that we didn't get to that you wanted to discuss today? Um. Hmm. hmm. No, man, I think I think Fernando Tatis is going to have a 50-50 year. 50-50? Um, yeah, 50 homers. What is it, 50 homers, 50 stolen bags? No one's done that before. Or 40-40. 40-40, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, hey, maybe 50-50, man. That the would be he's insane. Going right now, dude, he has almost 20 home runs right now. Um, yeah, just look out for him. Not that people aren't looking out for him, but I think this guy – it, he, he's doing it with ease, with ease, putting up these numbers. Um, so he'll be fun to watch. And, yeah, I don't I don't think the Red Sox are going to – I think they're doing okay. But if I had to pick an early winner right now, I'm gonna so we can run – as you think about it, we can run through these teams. I think right now we're kind of establishing who's in it who's not in it because I the next five or six weeks are going to be pivotal for a lot of teams. For instance, the Reds or the Cardinals, some of those bubble teams uh, in the AL right now, the teams that are really in it and potentially there's always a chance for a team like what the nationals did uh, two years ago. At this point, they were not in it. They really got going later in the season. Um, but off the top of my head, we have in the AL, we really have the um, Houston and Oakland out West. I don't think any other team from the West is going to be a playoff contender. In the American League, you have the White Sox with a, the biggest division lead of any team. Uh, Cleveland is winning some games. They're going to be in that wild card hunt. Kansas City's around 500, so they're not totally out of it yet, but they probably will be soon. And then uh, on the AL East, you got four really competitive teams. Uh, Blue Jays and Yankees not quite up there with the Red Sox and the Rays. But those are your AL those are your AL teams that are in contention. Yeah, AL East is tight besides the Orioles. Um, other than that, it, it looks tight there. Um, 
Yeah, I don't think the Royals, they're, they're, gonna, they're not. They're not. <laughs> Indians and White Sox will run there. Uh, and, and the Astros are a great team. Astros, the Astros have great chemistry. They're coached well. Bregman's great. Correa's great. Um, of course, Altuve. I think they'll make some noise, and they got a chip on their shoulder, man. A lot of a lot of ballparks are booing them. A lot of teams don't like them, and look out for them to make some noise. I think they want to make a statement this year. Now, my one question with the Astros would be, as the spin rate thing, they've had the highest spin rate at the top of the league for a few years now, and we know that they've been willing to go the extra mile and do things that are illegal offensively to gain an advantage. What's going to happen to their pitchers when we crack down on all this stuff over the next several weeks? That's something I'm really interested in because they've had so many guys that have gone to Houston and either had some late career revival or look at Cole, look at uh, Charlie Morton was a guy who was an average pitcher up to the time he got to Houston. And they've had like a lot of these pitchers that they have that have been doing it for them recently nobody had heard of and they just came up so uh that's something i'm really interested in dario we'll see what happens there it's a good point so garrett cole's been using the substance for a while right yeah i don't know if you saw the clip uh look it up afterwards but he got asked about it um and he could not he tried he didn't want to lie so I, i respect him not for lying but he got asked the question and he really fumbled his words around and he said like yeah, um, this thing's been passed down from one generation of pitchers to the next. Uh, There are certain rituals that these guys uh, do, and a lot of people do it. And I'm not saying that I do it or I don't do it. It was was very wishy-washy, and the New York press really ate him alive. And I feel bad for Garrett Cole because, look, everyone's doing it, so why wouldn't you do it if everyone's doing it? Um, And he seems like a nice guy, but, yeah, it was a tough watch. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, they, they, there's there's a lot of clips on social media. You see guys really digging into their gloves uh, or their hat. And, yeah, MLB got to do something about it. Yeah. And then who do you like out of the National League, Dario? Uh, let's see. Dude. I mean, I don't want to be that guy that's just choosing favorites, but – I like the Dodgers, man. I like the Dodgers. Um, I like their team. I love Mookie. Uh, I love Bueller. Those guys, they've done it. They've had success. They're experienced. They still have a full roster. And I think the Dodgers are going to make a a huge run this year. And, um, yeah, I like those guys. I have a Bellinger jersey, like like a really nice Bellinger jersey. And I don't. I didn't like going to Dodger Stadium. I've been a couple times. I didn't really enjoy it. But the I traffic like is awful on traffic, the way to the park. It's so up bad. The hill, it's old. Like Fenway, there's it's more spread out, you know. Um, but I set my expectations high because I grew up on a, the greatest ballpark in Major League Baseball. So. Yeah, I did too here in Chicago. It's pretty great. Yeah. What's up with Bar- uh, Bartman? Bartman, he's. Yeah. Uh, I think he lives in Florida now. Uh, he, the Cubs gave him a World Series ring a few years ago, so it seems like the Bartman era is pretty much, pretty much over. I don't that think that's a thing hilarious. anymore. That was hilarious. That guy, like, he couldn't show his face. I remember that. You know, Moises Alou used to pee on his hands. Yeah, he did. He, did. he was in. He, I think he hit the ball. Didn't, no, no, he jumped up, right? Yeah, he he got up there, and Bartman, uh, he put his hands out there and hit off his hands. Alou was under it. Alou, part of the problem for Bartman is that Alou had the reaction that he did. That kind of made it worse for Bartman. Um, And then, yeah, there was a whole 30 for 30 about it. They had to, like, take him out of this, escort him out of the stadium. Not just because that's your, any, any person who interferes is kicked out of the stadium, but it was more for his protection. People were throwing beer bottles at him and all kinds of stuff. And then Alou, give him a lot of credit. He says a couple years later, he says, uh, I wouldn't have caught that anyway, which is like he clearly would have caught it, but he's trying to he's trying to help Bartman out. He feels bad. Yeah. For him. Poor guy, man. I'll never forget that. Yeah, I, I really thought the Cubs were going to do it that year. It was like yeah, five outs away. Got, uh, 
I think Theo's gone, right? Theo Epstein, he's all done, right? Yeah, he left. And I actually think that, um, you know what I think is interesting with you being a Boston guy? I feel like the his ending with the Cubs was similar to his ending with the Red Sox, where um, I read a book recently. It's called The Cubs Way by Tom Verducci. And in it, Theo talks about when he left Boston that he kind of got bored. Like after he won, the, he won two championships with the Red Sox. But one of the big things he would do was kind of like a money ball type of approach. He would find a lot of guys who were uh, cheap that you could find a good sleeper type player. And then what he ends up doing is he ends up spending money on Carl Crawford. And he, he, he defined it. He said, I got lazy. I lost interest in going and trying to find the most cost effective options. And what happened with the Cubs over the last few years? I mean, he spent money uh, not very responsibly. And um, now they, the Cubs have been shedding some of that salary in hopes of securing some of these guys for the long haul. But I think I think it was a similar type of set of circumstances. So he's working in the Major League Baseball League office at this time. I think he's waiting for the next type of project that can open back up. Like if he were to go to Cleveland, he could be a, a legend there. Um, or if he could win somewhere where either they haven't won before or they haven't won in a long time. Uh, I mean, I think that's what he likes. I think he likes new challenges and he gets kind of bored with uh, – with success, I think. Yeah, Derek Jeter, he, they hate him in Miami. That guy, talk about getting into the front <laughs> office and just, he was firing everybody. Like, just, I read so many articles about people that had been with the team for years and years, and Jeter just came in and was like, I don't give a damn. See ya. You know, but it was. You know, it was like a yeah. movie, like a body swap movie, where all of a sudden everybody hates Cheater and now they love A Rod. Like I don't get it. It used to be yeah, the other I, way around. A Rod is, dude. That's a hard. That not only is that a prestigious job, but getting the Sunday night baseball role, dude. Like you, I don't know. There's plenty of other guys that that could have went to. So I don't know what he did. Maybe J Lo helped him. <laughs> so Dario, here's what's gonna happen. It's the year. 2031 we're going to buy the baltimore orioles and what are we going to do to turn this team into a winner what changes are we going to implement how can we make this a fun fan experience any ideas uh we're going to get rid of the first baseman that they spent a ton of money for but <laughs> he's still, yeah he's still going to be there 10 years from now <laughs> right um Chris yeah, I mean, we're, we're gonna we're gonna work we're gonna work on our on our minor league system. We're gonna work on 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 on, on not only retaining players but grooming players, and that starts at um, whether that's in Dominican Republic or college baseball, but building a farm system that can generate good homebred players and focusing on high A and double A. And then, you know, hey, I don't know how these guys get a budget, but figuring out how to get fans to the ballpark so we can start building around a couple pieces, whether that be a Tatis. Um, I think positions like shortstop are what you should be building around and not so much first base or, you know. There's just more value to me in a shortstop than there is a, you know, a left fielder that, that can rake and spending a bunch of money that way. And I think the one thing that I would add is I would say that we need to somehow make Baltimore more attractive to people because that's not one of the most desirable cities in uh, the U.S. to be in. So we kind of put some pressure on the local government to, uh, I don't know, make it a better place. And if they don't, then we move the team to Nashville. And then we, we go to a new location and we generate a ton of buzz. I think that would look at like, mm. look at the Vegas Golden Knights. We could move to Vegas. Well, Oakland may come here. So they this, could. This, this may be taken. I've been hearing for a while. Oakland A's are coming to Vegas. If that happens, season tickets are on their way to my house. Guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. They yeah. got a minor league team here, the Aviators. They're all right. Whose minor league team is that? Oakland. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They're, right. they're um, going to leave Oakland, I believe it. My girlfriend got mad at me. She got me tickets, and it was the seventh inning. I'm like, all right, let's get out of here. And she's like, what? <laughs> Why are we leaving early? And I'm like, no one stays nine innings at a minor league game. But I'm, I mean, that's not something that I would normally do. But for whatever reason, it just wasn't entertaining. I'm like, let's get out of here. 
<laughs> Good stuff, man. All right. Well, uh, we're wrapping up here. So how can people find you? Is there anything that you'd like to, yeah, tell us about what you're doing right now. Uh, you're building a career. Yeah, yeah. So I own a mortgage company. We're doing very well. The mortgage industry is hot right now. I'm um, actually, so I'm a mortgage broker. So I can help consumers with all sorts of different credit scores. Basically, I can do more. I work for 30 different banks and we're able to offer the lowest interest rate and, and, and most cost effective solutions to homeowners. And that's a fact. That's not just me saying that. Um, but yeah, we're having a lot of success early. I'm really happy and a beautiful office and we're growing a team and you know i got i got dreams to be um to be a top lender one day so we're good we're at the building phase we're at the high a phase you know <laughs> right. trying to make it to double a uh, little by little but yeah i'm happy yeah i think i'm here in rookie league with my show here but uh we're building something here we're too building, man this is this is what it's all about the journey man yeah. You're well on your way, man. Uh, even you reaching out to me and getting this stuff like that's not easy to do. One day somebody will be doing that for you and you're just focused on content. So. Yeah, I appreciate it. So how can people uh, get in touch with what you're doing if they want to uh, follow along on social media or anything of that nature? Yeah, uh, uh, my social handles are pretty much my name on every platform. I will say this. I do not post that often, but who knows? Maybe in the future I'll make uh, I'll make it a point to post more. We're trying to do some YouTube stuff, but yeah, you can find me just, just my name on every platform, Dario Madrano. And um, if you're interested in real estate mortgages, that's, that's what we're going to be talking about. All right. Good stuff. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dario. This is great. All right, man. Yeah. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you. All right. That does it for my conversation with Dario Madrano. A uh, great time talking baseball and some college football and challenge with him today. Uh, hopefully we can get some more folks from the challenge world on this podcast in the future. Next week, I will have Garrett Powell. Uh, he's a golf pro. He's been on this show before. He was here uh, about a month ago. Great guy. Fantastic guy. Garrett will be here. We'll be recapping the U.S. Open for golf. And we'll also be talking some baseball, doing similar thing to what we did today. Uh, there'll be a video aspect of the podcast as we had today. You guys want to uh, follow along? It'll be on my Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. Um, maybe not Twitter, but Facebook.com slash Jack Vita Show. Twitter is and Instagram is at Jack Vita Show and YouTube.com slash Jack Vita. Uh, subscribe to the Jack Vita Show wherever it is that you get your podcasts, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You name it, we're available wherever podcasts can be found. Log on to my website, jackvita.com, for more content. I'm also writing over there in addition to all of the podcasts and content I'm creating. Until our next show, folks, until I talk with Garrett, I'm Jack Vita. Bring in the dancing lobsters. <laughs>